En couture. Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. Um. The court is now in session. Mrs. Sakoguchi, could you report the attendance of the parties Madame and individuals to the proceedings? Madame Sakoguchi, je vous prie de faire rapport à la chambre sur la présence des parties et autres personnes. Good morning, Mr. President. All parties are present except the accused in cell A, who is present in the holding cell downstairs. He requests to have his status present through his counsel to participate in today's proceeding. And the request is for the whole of the proceeding. As for the next. Witness. Concernant le témoin suivant, TCW 307, TCW 307, il est présent, il attend que la Chambre le convoque dans le prétoire. Thank you. The chamber will now decide on the request by the accused Yang Sari. The chamber has received a request by Yang Sari dated. Six September 2012, through his counsel, to have his direct presence in today's proceeding, and instead requests to follow it through a remote means. He demands the authorization to follow the audience at distance for the whole day. Koi Samnan, the treating doctor, has examined the accused this morning at the ECCC detention facility and observed that Yang Sari is fatigued, feels dizzy, and has backache and recommends that the chamber so authorize him to follow the proceeding through a remote means from the holding cell downstairs and as Mr. Insari himself requests to have his direct presence due to his health and as observed by the treating doctor but that he is fit physically and mentally to follow the proceeding through a remote means from the holding cell downstairs and that he is able to directly communicate with his defense team. And the chamber grants the request by the accused in the case to have his direct presence in the courtroom and authorized him to follow the proceeding through an audio-visual means from the holding cell downstairs and that applies for the whole day proceeding. A unit due and strategy to link the proceeding to the holding cell downstairs so that the accused in Seri can follow it. Le matériel audiovisuel reliant le prétoire à la cellule détention temporaire. La parole va être donnée à la défense de Nunchea pour la poursuite de l'interrogatoire. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. Merci. Good morning, to you, Mr. Witness. Bonjour, Monsieur le Témoin. I hope you had a restful evening and a good night's sleep. J'espère que vous êtes bien reposé. Before we continue with the questioning. I have one, uh, one point I'd like to raise. Uh, for the record, Mr. President, I, I did take you up on your suggestion yesterday, and I reviewed and I had a look at Rule 76 as you suggested, and that rule states, subject to any appeal, the closing order shall cure any procedural defects, de procedural defects in the judicial investigation. No issues concerning Aucune such procedural defects may be raised before the trial chamber or the Supreme Court chamber. La de la Cour now, first of all, I'd like to say that the kinds of things we've been talking about, that is the Nunchi defense team, the kinds parlé, of things we've been defense, complaining about, uh, quite frankly, de qui ont été are les not the kinds of things that anyone could reasonably describe as procedural defects. What we're talking about are fundamental fair trial issues. De procès what if, if my memory serves me correctly, in the United States we refer to si as bons, substantive due process rights, not to mention rights. 
not to mention that these issues go to the credibility du fait que ces questions of touchent à la crédibilité des témoins devant cette chambre. So if you permit me to give you a hypothetical example, un and I'm not suggesting that, that this has been taking place, but let's just ici. say that in Mais the midst of a hypothetical civil law trial, que dans un it was discovered de droit civil, that a particular investigator had paid certain witnesses to give testimony, if that fact déposer. came out during Supposons the trial. Fait au Now, I don't think any judge, civil law or Aucun otherwise, juge would consider that to be a procedural defect. That's clearly something that goes to the substance of the evidence, de fond qui something à la that should be discussed de at the trial Et stage. Now, again, I'm not suggesting process. that that kind of thing Je ne dis pas que ce genre de choses, le président interrompt. President, if I am not mistaken, this morning I si had the floor to Lundi's defense si je vous ai donné la parole, to put questions pour poser to des this questions witness. À ce témoin. That is my instruction this morning. Ce sont les instructions que j'ai données. The floor is not given to you just to vous n'avez pas reçu la parole pour euh, soulever d'autres questions à votre guise. You raise the issue of the seriousness regarding the question answer session. Vous avez soulevé certaines questions yesterday and we already ruled hier on that issue. Pendant l'interrogatoire, the chamber also et la chambre s'est déjà prononcée. informed you of this matter and if you consider the matter is si of a serious nature, you shall submit it in writing to the chamber de with un document sufficient grounds. Comportant and The chamber also reminded you to consider motivé. the relevant internal rule, outre, that is Rule 76.7, which clearly says that, except that it is the subject of the appeal, et dit que l'ordonnance de clôture devenue définitive couvre, s'il en existe, les nullités de la procédure antérieure. No procedural defects Can be Il est indiqué qu'aucune unité de procédure ne peut plus être invoquée devant la Chambre en première instance or, or ou la Chambre chamber. de la Cour suprême. That is just an indication to the internal rule for your consideration for the submission. We already ruled yesterday. Hier, la Chambre s'est déjà prononcée. Regarding the objection by the prosecution of this witness de l'objection de and the sole purpose was not to delay the, the testimony of these witnesses de ne for weeks. Pas retarder and for that reason you saw cet interrogatoire et le faire durer plusieurs semaines c'est pourquoi writing. votre demande et le cas échéant doit être déposé par écrit si vous n'avez pas de questions à poser à ce témoin la parole sera donnée à notre équipe de défense afin de favoriser la célérité de la procédure I'm well aware la défense, of the merci limitations on freedom of speech in je sais qu'il y a ici des limitations à la liberté de parole dans ce prétoire j'ai simplement appliqué votre proposition tant à prendre en considération de la règle 76.7. Le président interrompt. We give the floor to you to put Nous vous avons donné la parole witness. pour interroger ce témoin. And if you intend to submit your request si in vous voulez writing regarding the matter écrite, you raised yesterday. concernant la question que vous avez soulevée hier, You should do so. Il vous revient de le faire. And you should consider all the relevant Il documents vous before you make such de a submission. Tenir compte de you also reminded tous les of the relevant pertinent. internal rule. En particulier, yes, la règle pertinente du règlement intérieur. Je le répète, si selon vous, c'est une question importante, et un motif Then de préoccupation important pour vous, alors tenez submission. compte de la règle pertinente et faites des observations écrites en conséquence. La Chambre vous a signalé quelle était la règle pertinente et ceci est sans rapport avec l'interrogatoire de ce témoin. 
your speech Vous ne pouvez pas saisir or rest your concern is not relevant to the instructions by the chamber to you that is to put questions to this witness l'interrogatoire de ce témoin Thank comme l'a indiqué la chambre Again, good morning to you, Merci. Mr. Witness. Uh, nouveau, I do have a few more questions témoin, for you today. Uh, hopefully, it won't take too long. Ça ne I pas suspect trop that I will finish in about an hour, certainly Je before the, the morning's en avoir coffee break. Une heure, en tout cas avant la pause la pause café and I will endeavor to speak very slowly Je de for my parler friends in the translation lentement. booth. Let me first start with pour mes an issue des that was raised yesterday by my colleague, Major Sonarun. And again, Major Mr. Witness, I Sonarun. don't mean to bombard you in any way myself with repeated questions. I'm just trying to get a bit of clarity for the record and for our own, uh, our own position on this side of the stage. So if I could just return to something that Major Sonarun discussed with you yesterday, and this is regarding Nguyen Chia's position Cela with the People's Representative Assembly. Le poste de and before I get to my, my follow-up question, let me just clarify, for your suivi, sake, for the record's sake, and for everyone's sake, that Nguyen Chia has never denied his position as chairman of that assembly. He did hold that position. Assemblée. He has said so on many il occasions, cette position, il a dit de and he stands reprises. by that position il today. Cette position and let me just add that he is in no way ashamed of having held il that position. Est now, cette turning position. back to my colleague's question from Je yesterday, par mon confrère. which I believe, if memory serves, was along the si lines of how could bon, you, Mr. Witness, était plus ou moins, how could you be so sure témoin, that Nguyen Chia was, as you suggested Nguyen several times, était, comme vous avez laissé entendre à plusieurs reprises, responsable du peuple. That was the question that Telle I believe was asked. Question, me Now, I'd like to first, before I put my question, Avant I'd like to turn question, to what you told one of the civil party lawyers ce que vous avez dit on Tuesday of this week. Civil, mardi. And again, it's probably best if I quote Je pense from the draft que le transcript, mieux so you can correct me if, if I'm misstating your evidence. Échéant, vous me corrigerez si j'ai déformé vos propos. And I'm quoting now from Tuesday's uh, transcript at page 56, pages 56 and 57, de mardi, page 56 when, you, and 57. Quote, when you were questioned on those documents by the co-investigating judges, je cite, quand vous avez été interrogé sur ce document par les coaches d'instruction et qu'on vous a demandé pourquoi il y avait une copie envoyée à Nunchia, vous avez Nunchia dit, was in je cite, Nunchia était responsable des services ayant trait au peuple. Pourriez-vous expliquer à la Chambre exactement ce que vous entendiez quand vous disiez qu'il était responsable du secteur ayant trait au peuple Ici, je continue de citer la partie civile. La question de la partie civile était... His responsibilities. Quelles étaient exactement ses responsabilités And your answer was, Et vous avez répondu, it was a public announcement that Mr. Nunchia was attached to the People's Nunchia Representative Assembly, and he was peuple. also the chairperson of that institution. De cette entité. So, as the People's Representative, Donc, he shall know whatever matters that are peuple, relevant to the people, and he was at the Supreme Body to be in charge of all matters relevant suprême, to the people, de toutes les questions, as he was representing them. Représentant. Do you remember making that, uh, que vous vous souvenez giving that answer, cela, having that exchange with the civil party lawyer quand vous avez été interrogé on par Tuesday? La partie civile, mardi? Réponse. Yes, I recall oui, my statement. je me souviens de ce que j'ai dit. I knew or learned of that through and uh, Opened announcement. Je l'ai appris suite uh, à une annonce publique, mais pour ce qui est des affaires internes uh, ou des arrangements internes concernant Nunchia, je n'étais pas au courant. Spoke, je me suis exprimé en m'appuyant sur ce que je comprenais à l'époque. Comme il était it affecté à l'Assemblée des représentants du peuple, people. cela voulait dire qu'il représentait le peuple. Et donc, the best, which may have an impact tout ce qui était fait people, dans les bases et qui pouvait avoir une incidence sur le peuple, he would be the 
Concernant tout cela, c'était lui le représentant suprême qui devait être informé de toutes ces questions et également pour défendre le peuple. Se disant, je me fonde sur ma compréhension des choses. I did not know that the standing committee assigned him Je ne savais pas que le comité permanent l'avait nommé pour I représenter le peuple. Je ne savais pas cela. My statement based on my understanding. Je me suis simplement exprimé en me And fondant sur ma compréhension des choses. Hey, the one who en tant que représentant du peuple, ça devait être lui qui était chargé du peuple dans tout le pays. So whatever matters. That concerned Et donc, s'il y avait des questions qui concernaient le peuple, well -being, ou les conditions de vie du peuple, c'était lui qui devait And en être informé. Il s'agit de mon avis personnel. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Question. And let me go back to the one of the first points Je you made about this public announcement. Une des premières choses que vous avez dites that sur public cette annonce publique. What did that public announcement say? Quelle en était la teneur exacte Est-ce qu'on annonçait seulement que Nunchia était responsable de l'Assemblée des représentants du peuple What I knew Réponse. publicly was that I listened to the Democratic Cambodia radio Ce broadcast que j'ai su, je l'ai su en écoutant les émissions de la radio du Cambodia démocratique alors que j'étais en train de travailler. So then I could learn about the situation J'ai donc été informé de la situation in the country et de l'évolution de la situation dans le pays. Je ne sais plus exactement en quelle année c'était. Cela étant dit, il me semble que c'était en 1976. L'Assemblée s'est réunie pour sa première session Who were appointed in a specific et l'on a annoncé qui avait été nommé à tel et tel poste. L'on a annoncé qui était le président du présidium de l'État, qui était le premier ministre, ainsi que le premier et le second vice-premier ministre. C'est comme ça que j'en ai été informé. Même chose pour l'Assemblée des représentants du peuple. Ils that for the People Representative Assembly, Concernant Nunchia cette assemblée, on a annoncé que Nguyen Chia en était responsable. And as for the court, it was Concernant Jab, le tribunal, c'était Kon Jab qui en était responsable. And for the state presidium, Concernant it was le Mr. présidium de l'État, c'était M. Kyo Sampan qui en était le président. I did not see this announcement in writing. Cette annonce, je ne l'ai pas vue sous forme écrite, However, that's what I can mais c'est ce And dont je me souviens. Years, so Cela I remonte à plus de 30 ans et donc je ne me souviens pas de tous les détails. Thank you, Mr. Witness. That's, that's fine. Just La one last question on this point. When they mentioned Nguyen Chia Quand was ils ont dit que Nguyen Chia était président de l'Assemblée des représentants du remember, peuple, d'après vos souvenirs, ont-ils ajouté quelque chose ou bien ont-ils seulement dit qu'il occupait cette fonction If you remember. Si vous vous en souvenez. Je ne m'en souviens pas, je n'étais pas au courant. La défense. Moving on Merci. To another topic. Je passe à autre chose. A particular telegram. This is telegram il s'agit d'un télégramme, le télégramme 54, dont il a été bit, uh, question since you've taken the stand. plusieurs fois depuis que vous avez commencé à déposer. Je ne vais pas vous poser des questions de fond sur ce télégramme, mais dans l'intérêt de tous, 
Je the document number for the record, it's uh, E3 stroke 513, and that's e Telegram 54, 513. we've been discussing it, I think Telegram everyone's familiar 54. with it. Le if you recall, Mr. Telegram. Witness, Monsieur le that is a telegram that dealt with, un uh, among other things, an alleged immoral act sur des actes de, with a woman by someone allégué. called Sot. Commis and so I just have a few questions about sort. what you told the OCP here in court with respect to that document. Do you remember discussing that, that telegram, vous, that vous one about SOT? Do you remember discussing that SOT? Yes, Réponse. I can recall that. Oui, je m'en souviens. Thank you. And again, just uh, Question. for the sake of clarity, I think it's, Pour que tout soit it's clair, a good idea if I quote from the, the transcript. This is the draft transcript, uh, Monday's draft transcript. That's the 3rd of September, and I'm at pages 27 to 28. Page 27 et 28. And I'm quoting now the question. When you were asked question, about why this type of telegram would have been sent to Nunchia, you said anything involved vous with avez the internal situation, la situation and the violation of moral codes, la violation du code they moral had to contact Nunchia because Nunchia was related à to the correction, because Nunchia was in charge of the people. Était responsable du peuple. Is that an accurate summary of your statement, Mr. Sopong? The telegram which dealt with violations and internal situations would be sent to Nunchia. And your answer was, at that time, I was not able to know this vous because dit, Pong was the one who oversaw all of this. Parce que Pong était celui but you qui asked me to help cela. analyze on this. Mais and based on my knowledge, the reason the message had to be sent to Om Munchia because he was in charge si of social affairs and culture. Parce était des de la so culture. when it comes to the violation of Donc, moral code, it should be moral, Uncle Munchia who would be, would be the person who Whose the message was sent. That's my message. analysis. Mon analyse. End quote. Fin de citation. And now, with respect to this passage, I'm particularly interested Ce in what you've referred to as ici, your analysis. So quand my vous first dites question is: il de votre Would analyse. you agree that that analysis that you did for the OCP que vous avez was pour done le bureau des after the fact? That is much, much later, at a time faits, after plus tard, you were engaged as a DK Telegram coder. At which you were a decoder of Telegram for the Kambucha Democratic. Is that correct? Response. What you just described is correct. Ce que vous dites est exact. And in regards to my response to the co investigating judges, la réponse que j'ai donnée au co-juge d'instruction, I myself was not sure. Moi-même. Whether the message had to be sent si to Nunchia. message devait être envoyé à Nunchia. But because I saw the Mais annotation, comme j'ai vu which read une annotation Uncle Noon, qui disait Uncle Noon, then I offered my opinion to the OCIJ investigators du BCJ, that, based on my analysis, sur la base de mon analyse, the message was sent to Le message Uncle Noon devait avoir été envoyé à l'oncle Noon because the content of the Et message was related to du the morality issues porté sur les questions de moralité and that matter was also related to the people representative assembly cela concernait aussi l'assemblée des représentants du peuple qui devait être informé de toutes ces questions violations à savoir because just les one infractions. individual person was also part en effet of the people tout un individu faisait partie of the du peuple people representative assembly confié à l'assemblée des représentants that du peuple was my analysis c'était mon analyse. 
My personal si la chambre considère que mon analyse personnelle ne saurait être prise en considération en tant qu'élément de preuve, that, that à ce moment-là, j'accepte que cette analyse soit rejetée. And I would like to make this statement before the chamber. Et je tiens à le dire devant la chambre. Because if you believe that it is my si vous pensez qu'il s'agit de spéculation the truth, ou de supputation de ma part et que ce n'est pas la vérité, eh bien, Thank you for that answer, Mr. Witness. And just to be very défense. clear, Merci. this particular Pour assumption is based clair, cette on two things. Se fonde sur deux choses. Title le titre de Nunchea et le fait qu'il y ait une mention de l'oncle Noun sur ce document. C'est là-dessus que vous vous fondez pour formuler cette hypothèse, n'est-ce pas yes, Réponse. That is correct. Effectivement. J'ai clairement vu Uncle cette annotation else, disant « oncle Noun » et « personne d'autre ». Thank you very much for that clarification, Merci Mr. Witness. Uh, I will turn to another topic. Yesterday morning, Mr. Witness, if Hier you recall, matin, Judge Lavergne took Juge you through a, a number of telegrams covering a sort of a potpourri of topics. Do you, do you recall that? That was yesterday morning. De thème. Est -ce que vous vous en I think it took the, the first part of the morning before the coffee break. Je pense que ça a pris la première partie de la matinée avant la pause café. Je ne me sens pas très bien et donc je ne me souviens plus à quelle heure des questions m'ont été posées. Je vous ai la défense. Désolé de ne pas vous avoir demandé si vous vous sentiez bien. Est-ce que vous êtes à même de continuer Ça va Réponse. I am able to, but please state your Ça va, mais to je clearly. vous demanderai de poser des questions claires. And please ask me a direct question so that Et directement, pour que je puisse répondre. I will do that. La défense, Judge je le ferai. Le juge right Lavergne est la personne qui est à la droite du président, la deuxième personne à sa droite, et hier matin, il a examiné avec vous plusieurs documents. Est-ce que vous That's en souvenez Ça, c'est ma première question. Réponse. Uh, which judge are you referring to? De quel uh, juge parlez-vous Est-ce un juge judge? international ou un juge cambodgien Indeed, a, a foreign judge, a French judge, Judge Lavergne. Le juge Lavergne. He's, he's wearing glasses and sitting two spaces to the right, to your deux. right, of the president. Uh, deux juges he's a very tall gentleman. Il est très grand. Bar, Yes, I, I recall um, the exercise, oui, but I could not uh, recall every detail of that je exercise. Tous les de la And I, if I may suggest uh, to the court, uh, je, it would be very helpful for me if uh, the court officer can prepare documents uh, for me, si because if you see the documents, document, a pile of documents uh, before me, documents. I can hardly uh, distinguish which uh, uh, was given by whom uh, here, so I, I can hardly uh, distinguish so. un peu de à faire la part des the president. Well, Mr. Witness, uh, if you cannot recall or remember, then you can say so. You do not have to uh, dwell on it. Uh, first, you may simply respond to the question whether or not uh, you answer to the question put by uh, the judge. Of course, if you 
ask about the uh, documents that were presented to you. I don't think that anyone in this courtroom will recall every single document uh, we have given to you. So you simply say so if you cannot remember. Witness. Thank you, Mr. President. I do not recall everything. Neither do I, Mr. Witness. Neither do I. You did, uh, you did answer some questions on these documents, and I'm not really interested in the substance of them. It was a series of, I think, about ten, maybe a dozen documents, as I said, and each one was a telegram. And as Judge Lavergne was discussing those documents with respect to each telegram, he mentioned that Nguyen Chia, among others, were copied on those documents. Do you remember that? It's fine if you don't. Concerning the carbon copy for others, normally in Almost every document, there was a uh, copy for Ancol, and Ancol Nunjir uh, would come first. Tous les documents qui étaient copiés, After Ancol number one, Paul Pert, Après, and then uh, Ancol Nun, followed by Ancol Van. So it Van. had to be in order. So uh, the order of Ancol Van could not come uh, before Ancol Nun. And Ancol Nun's order uh, was not uh, above Ancol uh, Paul Pert. And as I told the court yesterday concerning the Kabbalah copies of the document, uh, they had to copy to uh, Ancol, who, who was referred to Ancol Paul Pert, uh, and followed by Nguyen Chia, the second in the order, and followed by uh, Ancol Van and Von, Von. Q, Q were in the uh, orders. These were the orders of people whom uh, the uh, telegrams were copied to. And then, uh, last uh, on the list uh, was the documentation and archive. And that's what I have uh, explained uh, in this court uh, so far. I don't know why you are not clear with this procedure. Thank you, Mr. Witness. I sometimes have a hard time getting my head around things. Thank you for clarifying that. The, the question I wanted you to ask you was based on what you told us yesterday about the limits of your knowledge. And do you recall that conversation that you and I had about the limits of your knowledge? That would be my first question. Yes, I do admit it. You may be well aware that at my level, I was supposed to know the uh, general information like uh, other people in the world uh, would know about that information. I did not understand the internal working arrangement of the standing committee. Very well. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Witness. I'll, I'll just leave off on that for now, possibly come back to it. I'll move on very <coughs> quickly to another topic. And now I'd like to discuss particular <coughs> transmissions, excuse me, particular transmissions to and from Nguyen Chia, or at least your testimony about some particular transmissions to and from Nguyen Chia. The first, the first transmission I'd like to discuss regards something you said to the civil party lawyers on Tuesday, based on what you told them and what you told my colleague Major Sonnerou yesterday, during your tenure as a telegram coder, you only dealt with a single message from Nguyen Chia, and that was a 1977 invitation to a meeting of the People's Representative Assembly. Is that correct? 
n'est-ce pas Yes, uh, that was the case uh, once. And there was another instance, en I fait, do not recall the exact date, uh, but at that time, fois, uh, fois, Cambodian people were uh, suffering from either a drought or flood mm. or so at that time, mm. and then they approached on the issue a directive for us to uh, prepare a telegram to uh, give instruction to address the food pour shortage uh, issue. And at that time, uh, la the local authority were uh, facing natural disaster. And in that donc, euh, directive, there was a signature by and called Nguyen. That, that was the, the only case I uh, saw. Thank you, Mr. Witness. If we could stay with that for a moment, just so I understand it. There was a problem with flooding, I think you said, at the local level, and the leadership wanted to address this problem, to solve this problem somehow, and Nguyen Chia's signature was on the document. Is that, is that correct? Is that what you said? It was not meant to address the issue of floods, but the flood uh, had devastated uh, the crops of the people in one of the uh, locations. So he uh, provided a recommendation uh, for the people in order to address uh, the aftermath of the flood, for example, he uh, encouraged people to uh, plant uh, uh, crops and he also urged uh, the cadres uh, to uh, go to see the people and encourage people to replant uh, crops and things like that. So these were the recommendations uh, from him and there was a signature on that document uh, and it belongs to Noon. Thank you, Mr. Witness. I'll just move on to my next point. Uh, based on this, and now I would like to discuss a communication, a particular communication to Noon Chia. And again, based on what you told the civil party lawyers on Tuesday during your time as a telegram coder, I believe you said that you only saw one telegram relating to so-called moral offenses. And again, I'm referring to that, that telegram 54, the one that dealt with SOT. You said that was the only instance of a moral offense that, that you dealt with. Is that correct? That's exact. At the sector level under uh, Sarun, he reported only that instance. And as for other telegrams, there was no reports uh, in to that effect. Thank you very much. And now, if we could turn, perhaps, to one of your statements to the investigators, and I have two or three questions about that, and I'm referring to document E3-67, and that's the written record of the interview you gave to the OCIJ on the 28th of March, 2009. We've been discussing this document over the 
course of the last several days. Do you, do you remember this document? Do you remember this, this interview we discussed? This was your second interview. No, I do not. Let me then refresh your recollection and just simply read from a portion of this interview. And I'm referring now, again, that's document E3-67. That's the OCIJ interview of 28 March 2009. And I'm on English page 8. That's English ERN 0048-3970. Khmer ERN 0029-4542 and French ERN 0037-4937-38. And allow me to just read this out, Mr. Witness. This is your answer in response to a question put by one of the investigators. I did not know whether or not each location had made reasonable reports in accordance with the actual situations because some telegrams reported that the living standards of the people have become better, but actually they did not know that the people ate porridge. I did not know. I heard from my friends after they had gone home and returned that they were very sorry to see that the base was poor and deficient, that their parents did not have enough food to eat. But when one listened to the radio, it was broadcast that our country had plenty and was joyful in the great leap forward. In the democratic Kampuchea time, I also listened to the broadcast while working. I was so very happy to hear that the people had better living. There were canals linking with each other, but the fact was different from what the radio was broadcast. Sometimes, someone wanted to have good face for himself, he just reported very good, very good. But some places had made true reports as well. Do you remember giving that answer to the OCIJ investigators? Vous souvenez-vous d'avoir donné cette réponse aux enquêteurs et aux juges d'instruction? Yes, I do, and I stand by this statement. Thank you. Now, if I could just ask you one or two questions about this. It seems to me, it seems to me from reading this passage that you yourself in the telegram office during the DK period didn't know, didn't have a, a, a true or a clear understanding of what was actually happening at the bases and that that was in part because reports coming from the bases were not correct. Is that true? Is that an accurate summary of, of your position? I have already told uh, the court uh, that I did not have any idea whether or not the situation that evolved at the basis were uh, true or not. But I ask my colleagues uh, who came to visit uh, their homes, uh, they told me that in certain uh, bases uh, there were good uh, leaders and they had sufficient food uh, to eat, but in other places, people, uh, the leaders were uh, not that good and people had to eat porridge. That was the reality uh, that reflected the situation at the time. Thank you, Mr. Witness. And just one more question on this point. Uh, let me repeat what, what, what you said to the investigators. Sometimes someone wanted to have good face for himself. He just reported very good, very good. 
Could you just explain a bit what you meant by that particular sentence? Someone wanting to have good faith. Quand vous dites que quelqu'un voulait garder la face. It means that uh, people want to claim their credit. They want it to uh, be promoted, for example, if uh, they were at the sector committee, they wanted to uh, be promoted to the, uh, to the uh, zone committee or to the uh, central committee or standing committee. And that is the uh, greed uh, of certain individuals, so they simply wanted to claim credit for themselves. It was not... Uh, uh, the uh, clear or uh, totally accurate reflection because I it was based on my analysis because uh, I look at certain reports and they say that uh, the rice production yield uh, was up to three tons per hectare at other places there were five tons per hectare in other reports they also mentioned that ten uh, ton, 10 metric tons of rice production cube. yield per hectare. And if that was the case, why people were starving si at that cas, time? That, that was my uh, personal uh, judgment of the situation. And situation. upon hearing your question, uh, in question, my own analysis, I think uh, that analyse, there could have been certain people who wanted to claim uh, their credits. Uh, that's why they had to, donc, under report uh, of the uh, situation, and they make mention in their telegrams that uh, rapport, people were enjoying their life, there were progress made at their location, but in reality that uh, was not the case. Even uh, the uh, food, enough food to eat uh, was uh, difficult for the people and they did not even have proper clothes to wear. I also noticed uh, that uh, sometimes Anka uh, distributed uh, clothes and materials to them. Mr. Kilson Pond was the one who ordered the distribution of materials and uh, equipment, but unfortunately, people on the ground did not have access to materials and clothes to wear, for example. If the uh, center sent uh, the sewing machine uh, there, uh, Sometimes they were broken and it was under uh, maintenance, uh, so it was not put into good use. And that's why uh, it reflected uh, the miserable uh, con life condition of the people, and it also reflected the incompetence of the local authority in leading their own location. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. That was a very interesting answer. If I may move on to another question, staying with this, um, staying with this document, E3-67, moving to English page 12, and that is English ERN 00483974, Khmer ERN 00294546, and French ERN Zero zero three seven four nine four one. And again, I'll, I'll just quote to you an answer you gave to one of the questions of the OCIJ investigators, quote, on imposing sanction and investigation, the ANCAR had, not, had instructed not to do harm to the people. But as you already know, when an artillery was fired, sometimes it hit the target, and sometimes it did not hit the target we had set. Sometimes it scattered around. It was inevitable to cause death and injury. So my question to you, Mr. Witness, is do I understand that answer to mean that oftentimes people were harmed by what we would call in, in what we would call collateral damage, what we would call collateral damage, that is accidental consequences of what you might consider legitimate military activity. 
Mr. President, we would object to this question. Nous nous opposons à la question. Um, unless my learned friend can lay a foundation, um, we would object. Uh, we were instructed and took great care to elicit evidence from the witness's personal knowledge and experiences. Um, and, and the witness, if I recall correctly, has indicated that he did not go into the bases and nor did he ever observe any military operations. Again, I, I, I stand to be correct if I if otherwise was the case, but I would invite my friend to first lay a proper foundation um, ensure that the witness has the right knowledge of these events and then continue from there. I certainly agree with that. I, I apologize for not doing that first. Mr. Witness, let me ask you again, or let me just repeat a bit from your statement. When an artillery was fired, sometimes it hit the target, and sometimes it did not hit the target, be it said. Sometimes it scattered around. It was inevitable to cause death and injury. So my first question, which I should have asked you previously, what is the basis of your knowledge for that statement? I did uh, explain to uh, the court about uh, this issue already. I did not know uh, the truth at the basis, and I did not know whether or not there was artillery fire and killed the civilians. So whatever I said that I did not know, it was my assumption. So I would suggest that the uh, court remove uh, this statement. I think uh, that should be it, and that should be uh, invalidated because it was not the accurate reflection of the truth. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Witness. And moving on. Uh, I think I've got about, just to give my colleagues some notice, I've got about three more questions, uh, and then I'll be finished. Mr. Witness, the other day, Monsieur you mentioned in passing at some point during your testimony that you would be delighted, I, I think that's the word you used, delighted, to come back here in court and to testify about certain foreign perpetrators of, of crimes in Cambodia. Who did you have in mind when, when you made that statement? Again, Mr. President, we would object. Uh, we see no relevance. The President, uh, witness, please hold on. Mr. Prosecutor, you may proceed. Your Honours, we would object. We see no relevance to the witness's uh, outlook on what other perpetrators may be responsible, what other trials may hypothetically take place, and what evidence he may hypothetically give. It's not uh, an issue that's within the scope of this trial. My very brief answer would be if it is within this witness's personal knowledge that certain crimes were being committed during the DK period or shortly before the DK period by foreign perpetrators, then that is indeed relevant to many of the issues that we would like to have debated and discussed in this case. So let me perhaps rephrase the question and see if I can establish the basis of the witness's knowledge and go on from there. Mr. Witness, you mentioned this in passing. Perhaps it's best if you just explain to us what you were talking about so that we know how to deal with that, with that piece of information that you offered. Do you have some actual knowledge about foreign crimes being committed in Cambodia in this country? either during the DK period or shortly before the DK period? The President, a witness, please hold on.
The President, uh, the witness needs not answer this question. This question is not relevant to the relevant facts before us. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll move on to my next question. Mr. Witness, over the course of these, these past few days, there's been quite a bit of talk about offices beginning with the letter K, K1, K18, all, all those Ks on that chart that you prepared for the OCIJ investigators. So while we're on that theme, on the theme of Ks, I would like to know if you, as a Cambodian citizen, are familiar with Operation K5, the K-5 plan, which was implemented in this country not very long after the demise of democratic Cambodia. Are you familiar with K-5? Can your honors, um, with, with the president, uh, witness, please hold on. Mr. Prosecutor, you may proceed. Again, Mr. President, we would object for the same reasons with respect to my learned friend, um, events occurring after the end of the democratic Cambodia, um, unless there is a direct link with evidence that your honors are now hearing, uh, as simply relevant and should not be sont tout simplement dénuées de pertinence et ne sauraient procéder. Thank you, and, and as I've Maître said Yannick, several times before in this courtroom, the issue of whether or not deaths which occurred on a massive scale, on a rather massive scale, during the 1980s, have been wrongfully attributed to the Khmer Rouge. That's an issue that we've briefed the chamber on. That's an issue that we've raised time and again. As far as we're concerned, it's obviously relevant. So I think the question is a legitimate one. I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, though. The President. The objection and the grounds for objection by the prosecutors are valid. Uh, this question is not relevant uh, to the facts concerning the evidence we are hearing. Witness needs not answer to this question. Thank you, Mr. President. And I do have one more question, um, and Mr. Witness, thank you for bearing with me. This, this will be my last question. As, as someone who has specialized in, in secrecy and ambiguities and enigmas for a number of years, perhaps you can assist me and assist the chamber as to the particular significance of a phrase that I've been, I've been struggling with for some time now. And I've been told, I've been instructed that, that this phrase is a kind of secret code, that is a, a deliberately ambiguous use of, of the language, one that's utilized by certain individuals in positions of power in this country to exert their influence in subtle ways. And the phrase I'm referring to is as follows, the dogs bark the caravan passes. Now, I fully understand the literal meaning of those individual words, and I think I can partially grasp the general sense of that phrase. However, I thought, given your background and experience, you may be able to shed light on any deeper hidden meaning that attaches to that expression, especially when it is used by someone, for example, like Mr. Q. Canarit. Would you have any would you be able to shed any light on the deeper meaning of that phrase? Now, please don't answer if my, my friend is on his feet. Again, Mr. President, we would object clearly. clearly. President, witness, please wait. The prosecution, you may proceed. Again, Your Honours, we, we would object. I know it was my friend's last question, so I won't excuse him. Uh, of, of continuing to waste time, but clearly uh, the witnesses' comments about what people may say and what uh, the meaning of those words may, may be completely divorced from the democratic Cambodia context are irrelevant um, and, and avec le Cambodia démocratique. Ceci dénué de For the record, Your Honor, our, our position, as it has always been, Comme is toujours, that the public statements, explicit, implicit, public, or otherwise, by autre, government officials, which may or may not be attempts to influence these proceedings, 
pourraient ou non être détentatifs d'influencer ce procès et cela est pertinent pour les questions déjà bien connues. Je ne vais pas donc m'étendre là-dessus, c'était effectivement ma dernière question. Merci beaucoup de votre patience, M. le témoin, hier et aujourd'hui. Bonne chance à vous, merci. L'objection telle qu'elle a été motivée est retenue. Vous n'avez pas à répondre à la dernière question posée par la défense de Noon Chia. The floor is now given to Ian Sari's defense to put questions to this witness. La parole est à la défense de Ying Sari pour l'interrogatoire du témoin. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors. And good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom. Bonjour. And good morning, sir. À et à My name is Michael Carnavas, and with Je Mr. Angodam, we Carnavas represent avec Maître Angodam. Mr. Ying Sari. Nous représentons Monsieur Ying Sari. Now I want to go back to the time when you gave your first interview. I want to go back uh, to the time when you gave your first interview. And I'm referring to the document that you looked at yesterday hier, for the record, E3-64. And we can see from the very first page of this document that the statement on peut voir began on 18 February 2009 and that there was a Cambodian investigator and a foreign investigator. Do you recall that? Yes, I recall that. Réponse. Oui. And Question. if we go to the second page, in Khmer, la the page. ERA number is 00-3-0-2-8-0-2-2, going on to 2-3, French 00-4-1-1-6-9-3. And then English, it's 00 0043 0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0043-0
Yes, I recall that I took an oath. Oui. And when Je they advise you of your rights, Question. do you recall whether they advise you of your rights de vos before they went on tape or, avant in other words, before you spoke on tape, or was it after you began speaking on tape? Ne commence être enregistré, ou bien est-ce que cela a été fait après que vous aviez commencé à parler Bad. et à être enregistré They informed me. Of my right against self-incrimination. Ils m'ont informé de mon droit à ne pas faire de déposition risquant de m'incriminer. Just one technical matter. One of the boxes also asks if you know any foreign languages, and you say that you declared that you cannot read or write any languages. Do you recall taking that box off? Vous souvenez-vous avoir coché cette case? Just to Réponse. understand a language a little bit could not be used officially. For that reason, I declare that Comprendre I cannot read or write any other languages. Un petit peu une langue, cela ne suffit pas à des fins officielles. C'est pourquoi j'ai dit être incapable de lire et d'écrire d'autres langues. Uh, all right, thank you. Question. Uh, so that would explain why donc later on in your interview you, you indicated durant votre audition, that when you began teaching vous avez dit que the children, vous avez commencé à donner cours you were teaching enfants, vous French and English. Le français, that you had limited knowledge and you were, vous aviez but with that limited knowledge you were teaching the children, but for the purposes of this interview, enfants, mais dans le cas de cette audition, your knowledge was not sufficient. Vous ne connaissiez pas suffisamment ces langues. Réponse. It was not about teaching how to speak French or English. Je n'enseignais pas la pratique de parler du français ou de l'anglais. to have a basic knowledge of the Latin characters. Aux enfants, for example, certaines connaissances which one rudimentaires was des caractères a, latins. Which one was Par exemple, be. être A, être And B. English, the word A in French would be pronounced A. Etc. It was not a proper language class. Et thank you very much. And then if we look at the very last page of, uh, of this document, uh, we see that a copy of this was provided to you in writing and that this document was read to you and you had no objections before signing it et que vous n'avez formulé aucune objection avant d'y apposer votre signature. Yes, I remember Effectivement. that the statement was read back to me. Je me souviens qu'on m'a donné lecture de ma déclaration. And after having heard the statement read to me, Après it cela, was consistent with what I spoke. Comme j'ai constaté And after que that, ça correspondait I signed the statement. avec ce que j'avais dit, j'ai signé. Uh, very well. And we can see the date Question. that the date Nous is the 27th of March, 2009, 2009, which is about five weeks after the statement, environ cinq semaines après and one day la before you gave et your second statement. La veille Is that right? Du jour où vous avez fait votre deuxième déclaration. Est-ce exact? I cannot see when the interview started. Je ne vois pas à quel moment l'entretien a commencé. President, le président, the questions that you have been posing to 
the witness, vous avez do they posé des questions aux témoins Est-ce qu'elles sont en rapport avec well, les faits reprochés à votre client testified. Réponse. And he has given evidence which you are going to be relying on. C'est le témoin qui a déposé et il and va sortir des éléments sur lesquels vous allez vous appuyer dans uh, le passé. J'ai soulevé des questions relatives aux déclarations by the prosecution et that this is the time where we should explore those issues. Que le moment était venu d'examiner yes, ces questions. It is related to Effectivement, c'est en rapport avec ce dossier. Minutes, si vous me laissez see cinq how. minutes, vous comprendrez. But first, I want to make sure that the Premièrement, je veux m'assurer que le témoin that he signed it five reconnaît weeks after he gave avoir signé ce document cinq semaines And après l'entretien. Si l'on prend will... le deuxième entretien, the le président interne. La Chambre Did vous a posé une question. Avez-vous jamais lu ces déclarations pendant la phase d'instruction Maître Carnavas, c'est à moi que vous demandez cela yes, Si j'ai lu ces documents, oui, je les ai lus. Il y en avait des milliers. And, the is, Mais the la time question est de savoir si j'ai eu le temps d'examiner l'ensemble de toutes les transcriptions uh, And the answer de to that les cassettes is absolutely et not. la réponse c'est non, is, pas du tout. Il y a une meilleure question, c'est de savoir si everything. tous les juges ont and eu l'occasion no. de tout lire. Et la réponse est non, c'est physiquement humainement impossible. But part of our due diligence Mais is to dans le cadre de la area. diligence the question raisonnable, is, nous devons explorer ces questions. Today, la question est de savoir si ses dépositions faites aujourd'hui se font sur ses souvenirs de l'époque ou bien sur des événements qui sont intervenus pendant l'entretien lorsqu'on lui a montré des documents. Et nous verrons que certaines choses qu'il a dites et qui ont été enregistrées, le président Trump. Six. Je vous renvoie à la règle 76 du règlement intérieur concernant les requêtes en nullité. In sub rule number 12, de during the investigation stage, if any of the parties request to, to nullify, que si then it shall be done so through the co-investigating judges veut requérir l'annulation d'un acte de procédure, by lodging an appeal for nullification to the pre-trial chamber, en appel devant la the co-investigating judges may accept or reject the request and in any cases that shall be done prior to the issuance of the closing order. Et This cela is doit subject se faire avant to appeal based on the internal rules. And I already reiterated to the Council regarding Rule 76.7 regarding Concernant the cure of the procedural defects. Il est question And if des there is any such procedure defect, de nullité de procédure. those issues may not be raised before the trial chamber or the Supreme Il Court chamber. Nullité de procédure ne And peut these are the observations de la made suprême. by the chamber. And your question so far seems to, to lean itself to this part. And the question shall be put to this witness in relation to the charges against the accused. Les this is just a reminder to you, counsel. Well, thank you, Mr. President, but I La must défense. take exception because what you are suggesting is Je à ceci. that we do not have the Ce opportunity to challenge the witness's testimony. Pas That's what I'm hearing. You are taking that right away from us. Vous nous I'm not seeking nullification de of the process. Je ne pas Now, one of the other judges may think that that's what I'm doing, but that, that is not what I'm doing. Fais, what I am doing, however, is showing fais, that some things were said to the gentleman on the tape that never made it. Also, we will hear, test, we will hear uh, part of the tape where it is acknowledged that he spoke with the, uh, these investigators the day before. These two investigators are the same investigators involved in, a, in another matter. And in fact, one of the, the national investigators we now learn is related to one of the national prosecutors. And so these are the sort of issues that we want to explore. I certainly want to explore what happened the Et day before, was he shown cela. documents? How long was the conversation? Why was the uh, initial uh, interview tape recorded? 
What's the purpose of having a dress rehearsal? If you're going to try to have some transparency, si which is the purpose of having le président interrompt. I think Ça that's suffit it, the council. Le President, Judge Lavergne is tasked to take the floor and respond to this matter. You may proceed. Maître Carnavas, la Chambre tient à rappeler un certain nombre d'évidences. Tout d'abord, l'instruction judiciaire qui a précédé ce procès c'est une instruction qui a duré des années. Au cours de cette instruction, les actes d'instruction ont été versés au dossier. Ils ont été accessibles aux équipes de la défense. Toutes les questions que vous avez posées jusqu'à maintenant sont des questions qui sont fondées sur les procès-verbaux d'interrogatoire. Toutes les indications y figurent. Ces indications-là, elles étaient parfaitement accessibles tant pour vous que pour n'importe quel autre membre de l'équipe de la défense. Si euh, le président a rappelé à nombreuses reprises la règle veut que les exceptions de l'unité doivent être déposées avant l'ordonnance de clôture, c'est pour une raison précise. Il n'est pas question ici que nous refassions l'instruction de l'instruction. J'ajouterai aussi que, en ce qui concerne les enregistrements sonores des auditions, ces enregistrements sonores existaient, bien évidemment, en Khmer. Il n'y avait pas de transcription et non plus de traduction dans les langues anglaises ou françaises. Néanmoins, chaque équipe des accusés comporte des avocats cambodgiens et chaque avocat cambodgien avait la faculté d'écouter, s'il le souhaitait, ces enregistrements audio. Alors, il y a quand même des interrogations à se poser. Et que faisaient les avocats de la défense au cours de ces nombreuses années Instructions. Et ça, c'était des questions que vous avez posées vous-même. La Chambre serait créée en tout état de cause que nous puissions aborder des questions de fond et nous souhaiterions que les questions concernant l'instruction ne soient pas répétitives. Nous avons déjà été saisis 
not be subject to écrite, redundant and repetitive questions. De, uh, a we été have soulevé. received many written La submissions on this Mais matter. The Charter Chamber que nous avons will respond in due course, but I believe that we have explored the matter extensively and we are now ready to move on to the next topic. I would like to play Notre tape one, Carnavas. play four. J'aimerais faire passer la bande numéro un et la bande numéro quatre. With the court's permission. Si la chambre m'y autorise. President. Le président. Council. Could you please repeat as there is no répéter, nous n'avons pas entendu la permission Khmer. At this point, I would like to play tape one, faire passer play four. And what we are about la to hear, keep in mind Judge Laverne's uh, remarks, which in my humble submission go to the investigative phase, and I'm not talking about the investigative phase, I'm talking about this Ici, gentleman's testimony, and perhaps there's a cultural divide or a, or a, uh, a legal divide from our legal tra tra different traditions, but I assume that we're here to try to get to the truth. I assume that. Que nous là pour faire but la if we, when we play this, we will hear on the tape nous voir, words to the effect. I would like you to narrate your life story a little bit as you briefed me yesterday. Que vous nous un peu votre vie, so comme the day vous before hier, they went on dit, tape, la veille, the day before he was advised of his rights, il the day before de ses droits, uh, il y a eu he was questioned on tape. There was an interview. What documents were shown to him in that interview? How long that interview took place? Where did that interview take place? All those sorts of questions I'm entitled to ask. And if I'm not entitled to ask, I will be making submissions and I will be submitting also the questions that I would have asked to help you get to the truth, which would appear there's a disinterest on the part of the trial chamber to actually get to the truth because those sorts of questions are essential in, in determining what weight, if any, to give this witness's testimony here in court because in part his testimony is on his statements which occasionally he has to refer to. Car he's il told us on a number of occasions reprises, that he disavows what he said. Il sur ce qu il avait affirmé Earlier he said that he, stu that he signed it il a dit avoir having agreed with the content. Now, if he signed it under oath, agreeing with the content, either he misunderstood, either somebody else put it in there, either it was suggested to him, but these are the sort of things that I'm entitled to explore and why, because before you are submissions by the prosecution to hear hundreds of statements in lieu of, te of testimony. And when you pose the question to me, what I have been doing in my team for the last three or four years, well, let me remind the trial chamber that this was the very first case of this kind in Cambodia and all these, there were all sorts of legal issues that had to be addressed, otherwise we would have waived them. So, and the team that you suggest is pales in comparison to the armada. Et ce que the, nous demandons, Ali, en comparaison avec l'armada romaine que constitue l'équipe de l'accusation. So I'm entitled to explore this because it assists you to, to, to give way to this, to this gentleman's testimony. I am not attacking the, the, uh, the, the officer of the co-investigative judge, albeit it may seem that way. Si and yet, my third investigative request, I submitted asking the modalities, how do they interview, precisely, les modalités. On what are the, you know, how do they keep track of exculpatory evidence, what is the template, we never received an answer, had we received an answer, perhaps we wouldn't be here, but I believe this is a sort of tape that will assist the gentleman in his testimony, and perhaps I believe this is a sort of tape that will assist the gentleman to tell us how long the interview took the day before, because I wasn't there. Nobody was there. Only this gentleman was there, and the two investigators who were also involved under similar conditions in conducting such an interview. President, the prosecution, and you may proceed. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I'll, I'll try and be brief, but I think um, the record needs to be corrected in a number of respects. First of all, my learned friend referred to thousands of statements. Of course, as your honours know, that is not true. Uh, the, the initial reference to, was to, an up to thousands of statements. In fact, there were 943 written records filed over a period of three years, certainly not a insurmountable workload for a, 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 a team of lawyers and, and support. And let, that also, let the record also reflect that the resources of the OCP are roughly equal to that of the defence teams. Um, returning to the issue of propriety of an inquiry, that my learned friend is, is uh, proposing, and if I may just, I note your honours directive, and I just want to uh, add to the record also, um, this statement was filed on the 15th of September 2009, several months before the investigation was closed. Uh, it was available to my learned friend. Um, out of those 900 plus written records, um, a smaller number relate to the acts and conduct of the accused. One would have assumed those were the interviews to which the defence was paying attention and certainly interviews that would have been of interest to them, as they were particularly to us. Having not uh, raised any of these issues uh, or inconsistencies with the current investigating judges, having failed to request follow-up investigative action that would have been appropriate and had the defence considered uh, there to be any inconsistency, they now come before you some voilà que la three years after the interview to raise these issues, uh, they do not come question. before you in good faith. La that is our respectful submission. Um, and let me also avis. say the following. En toute uh, we would agree ailleurs, with counsel that where significant inconsistencies arise, where there is a legitimate question as to the credibility of a witness, we would agree with our learned friends that, a, that the, the some latitude should be given to them to explore uh, prior statements and prior transcripts. But what we have heard over the last several days is consistent and compelling testimony from this witness who has been at pain to stress the accuracy of his responses and to qualify those responses which he thought verged on speculation. Um, it is a question of degree. We would submit that this attempt to uh, falsely create a, a sense of controversy, which simply is not there, uh, should not be entertained in this particular case. Uh, we, are, uh, we will always support our learned friends' right to uh, test the evidence. But it is a question of degree, de and in this case, they have certainly de gone beyond that, uh, which is legitimate, and we pr propose that uh, our learned friend should now be directed to turn to alleged inconsistencies in the statements and, and, and test the witness's evidence in that manner. Thank you. The President, the time is now appropriate for the morning adjournment. Uh, we will adjourn from now until 10 to 11. Court officer is instructed to facilitate uh, the place for the witness to rest and have him back uh, in this courtroom by 10 to 11. The court is now adjourned. So I'm doing